Hey, welcome back to Minus Letter Live. My guest this segment is Geneviève Dechter. She is the founder and CEO of Grit Capital. Geneviève, thanks for coming in today. Yeah, awesome to be here. Geneviève, you've developed quite a reputation and depth of uh, domain expertise in the blockchain and crypto space, so I thought it would be very appropriate for us to have a discussion along those lines. Tell me about the difference between blockchain and cryptocurrencies. Well, I'm glad you, you asked that because I like to say um, people like Jamie Dimon have not uh, done the public a service by trying to kind of unwind those two concepts because mm -hmm. really they do come hand in hand. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, blockchain is essentially it's a ledger, you know, so think of it like a long Excel spreadsheet. Um, you know, each block is an entry. Uh, the very first Bitcoin that was ever mined um, was a reward for keeping that ledger, right? Mm. So, so you're not going to get that done for free. Some, right. Somebody's got to get something for it. So the, the, the crypto, the coin is actually the reward, is actually the, the, the thing you get for keeping that blockchain, that ledger um, going. Hmm. And so only in sort of like the private blockchain space, so say you have a private company like an IBM that creates a, a blockchain, obviously they're gonna pay themselves to keep that, that going and to uh, keep it intact. So they don't necessarily need uh, a coin or a reward, mm -hmm. but really uh, like on day one of when this all started, those two concepts like go hand in hand. So hmm. they're not to be separated in my Interesting. opinion. Interesting, so is every crypto coin a reward for somebody who's maintaining a blockchain? Well, so you have you have computers around the world that right. are mining essentially, mm -hmm. right? And so they solve these really complicated algorithms, equations, and, and, and whoever solves it first, I'm oversimplifying this, but whoever solves it first, you know, gets the coins. Right. And so that machine power that they're using, um, you know, they're not doing that for free again. So that's that's how they get the coins. Mm -hmm. um, there's different concepts that are coming out now. Um, what I'm describing is proof of work. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there's proof of stake. So there are some coins that are coming out now that don't necessarily need, um, you know, proof of work mining. So this really like Okay. environmentally, you know, unfriendly sort of uh, energy intensive. brought us down that rabbit hole. Yeah. <laughs> what is the difference between proof of work and proof of stake relative to any cryptocurrency? Um, so, so proof of work is like what I was describing the, these machines. So that would be like a HUD-8 mining, a publicly traded company on the TSXV here mm -hmm. that's uh, mining Bitcoin uh, across mm -hmm. North America. Um, and uh, proof of stake is essentially when you go out there and you don't actually, the coins aren't actually like mined in that way. Mm -hmm. um, think of it kind of like they're, they're held in, in custody by, by somebody. So somebody goes and tries to stake and own as many of the, of the coins that are out there as possible, hmm. uh, but they're not actually like mining them themselves. Right, okay, so what's the, what's the, uh, what's the application? What's, where, where is it relevant to have a proof of stake relative to proof of work? Honestly, I think it comes down for me. I haven't gone down that rabbit hole <laughs> okay. to that degree, but right. like the obvious one is just from an energy and intensity perspective at this point, because okay. people are concerned, right? With the, yeah, these computers around the world that are solving these equations that really aren't, you know, that relevant, but mm -hmm. just to just to you know basically gain the coins. Like there's some of that that doesn't really have any doesn't really need to be done that way and in the future it probably won't mm -hmm. um, so yeah there's like different uh, infrastructure that's being built to go after this attack it from a different perspective sure you had a conference in the Bahamas uh, earlier this year tell me about that yeah so we had over 600 people down in Bahamas uh, some of the biggest thought leaders in the space so we had Patrick Byrne the CEO of Overstock mm. uh, was a headliner we had Anthony Diorio who you've had on the show here mm -hmm. co-founder of Ethereum I uh, was a keynote speaker, hmm. and we had portfolio managers from Bay Street. So, hmm. um, you know, we had people who are managing billions of dollars in, in equities that are curious, haven't yet stepped into buying coins for their own funds. Um, mm -hmm. Because right now, you know, like we don't have all of the infrastructure to hold coins as, as a portfolio manager. Like you still need, you know, um, custody. You need custody that's insured. You need companies that can do the valuation work. Mm. You know, there's tax implications to owning crypto. So all these things are sort of being built out now. And that's why they're sort of calling 
2018 the year of uh, the institutionalization of the space. Hmm. Um, you know, just in the last couple of weeks, we've had George Soros announced that he's getting in it. Uh, Rockefellers are getting in the space. Hmm. Uh, even SAC Capital, um, Steve Cohen's company, he's got a couple traders left starting a fund. So I don't think he's allowed to call it that anymore. No, <laughs> he's not. Definitely not. Right. Okay, so the you know so the 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 segment, the sector at this point appeals to essentially a very sophisticated subset of the institutional high net worth investor, ultra high net worth, we'll call them. And so at what point does the sector become more appealing? So it seems to me like there's the super high net worth guys who sort of understand it because they've got smart kids paying to tell them what it means, what it all means to them, and they're saying, okay, this sounds good. Then you've got the, you know, the, the younger generation who are, in fact, the originators and programmers of the cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. At what point does this all go mainstream? So, you know, I, I kind of like to say that there, there is a mainstream aspect to it. Um, most bubbles really start with um, uh, the institutional portfolio managers getting in, and then the people left holding the bag is usually the mainstream. But in this case, um, because, you know, it's been 10 years since the first Bitcoin was mined, prices have gone up so high, it has attracted a lot of like average investors out there, which is one of the reasons why the SEC in the US is so concerned. Mm -hmm. Because the $5 billion that was raised last year in, in ICOs, a lot of that money was raised like online, uh, through you know crowdfunding, uh, people never meeting these companies, people not understanding what they're actually doing, no disclosures, um, and you know, now what the SEC is saying is that most of these ICOs, which were supposed to not be considered securities, um, you know, in fact, they are securities, and, and most of these ICOs are failing, um, or, or sorry, not failing, passing a test they don't want to pass, which is the, the Howey test. I don't know if you've heard of this test, but I haven't. so in the in the U.S. to be considered, uh, and, and the Canadians kind of adopt the same the same thinking. Um, if, in, if money is being invested in a company, if you're expecting to profit from that investment, and if the profit is coming from the, the inner workings and, and, and the efforts of that company, it's a security, mm -hmm. right? So most companies that are raising capital via ICOs, you know, they're, they're, they're passing this test. So essentially they need to be working with regulators and not raising capital from certain sets, subsets of the population mm -hmm. um, uh, unless you know they have the proper disclosures, prospectuses, right. offering memorandums. Right. So the TSX has actually moved to create a platform for the securitization of ICOs on behalf of publicly traded companies seeking to raise capital through that mechanism. Mm -hmm. Is that something that is, did that, do you think that's something that's going to become mainstream within capital markets as an alternative to issuing shares? Will we be issuing coins? Will investors be buying coins in a company in the near future, do you think? Yeah, I do, I do think so, because if you think about it, you know, back in the day we had, I like to use this analogy a lot, like flip phones, right? All mm -hmm. these phones did were allow you and I to talk. And then the smartphone came out, and the smartphone has applications on top of it. And so if you think of equities today, what, what are equities today? So they're essentially a share certificate that sits in a custody box at a bank or a brokerage firm. Um, yes, it's, it's digitized like in your account, um, but there's still, it's very archaic, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a share. In the future, you're gonna have coins, and these coins are smart coins. What does that mean? You can actually bake in a lot of information in those coins, like whether it's KYC, know your client, whether it's AML, anti-money laundering. Um, I really think it's also gonna open up the capital stack in a different way, meaning like equity, debt, but mm. like all sorts of other funding mechanisms can be built into these coins. And so I think the future of owning a share in a company is gonna be via coins. And I think for companies, um, you know, they, 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 they have been using the online platforms to raise capital through crowdfunding, and I think that's gonna become more pervasive, but I do think that everyone, well, everyone, companies are gonna have to be uh, talking and working with the regulators. And so hmm. it's not gonna be ICOs, it's gonna be what are called STOs. And our conference that we had in Bahamas was the first ever in the world a security token conference. Hmm. Um, there hasn't been one to STO. date. STO. STO, yeah. Hmm, we're hearing it here first. <laughs> so we're gonna have to leave it there because we have reached the not like attention span of the online audience <laughs> these days, but we are going to do this again. Okay. Thank you so much for coming in today. Okay, thank you so much for having me. Thank you.